Well, all right, we are here. Kel, Adam, how you doing? Feels good to be back. <laughs> <laughs> I just let Adam tell us how we're doing. That's what happens. That's perfect, because it's like he's coming from 70s or 80s radio. Good to be back. <laughs> Welcome to our program. Yeah. <laughs> perfect. You know what's happening on the program today? I don't know. You'll t you tell me. All right, here we go. I'll yeah. tell you what's happening. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you this. I can say that, uh, well, we will collectively be able to tell you why Will Smith uh, could, be a, could be a very good boss to have. Also that Julia Louis-Dreyfus is set to make us laugh again and again. And of all the heavy stuff that uh, Alanis has shared with her fans through her music, she's um, getting set to surprise us once again in a very sort of accessible way um, and mildly musical. Is that enough of a tease to make you keep on listening, you guys? Yeah. I uh, hope so. We'll tell you what sexy rock star didn't plan to be up front. Um, but obviously now there's no turning back for this six pack of a rock star. <laughs> uh, also, Kelly's trivia coming your way. Test your uh, knowledge there. We'll give you a 90s rewind at the end of the show. And the many layers of one of the kings of hip hop. Uh, proving once again, he knows exactly how he or how to become one of those kings. So I think that that's the word we should start today. Snoop Dogg. Snoop Not Dogg. <laughs> okay, so what Snoop Dogg has acknowledged is uh, that there's more than one generation of people listening to his music. How cool is that? And that's super smart to be able to know that, that your audience isn't niche. There's not just one set of people. There's a bunch and that you have to um, address that in your creativity, I think. Would you not yep. concur, you guys? I, I don't know how many artists actually have that luxury of knowing that they have the moms, the dads, the kids. Not every artist has that. Well, it's interesting that you call it a luxury because I think that's what keeps people humble, recognizing that you have listeners, period, fans, period. Uh, but in a way that, uh, gosh, he was, like, it's funny from our perspective, I think we know him as an artist that keeps on keeping on. But we certainly know from the show's perspective that his roots are in uh, in the 90s, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but what he has said is that uh, it works to both sides of it as far as knowing that there is a young generation that probably don't know nothing about my music in the 90s. He says, I got to make music for them as well. But at the same time, I got to make music for their mamas and their daddies too. So uh, he says he just tries to make sure that he takes care of the whole house. <laughs> Which is something uh, admirable to say. And by the way, something I loved in the article we read was that he mentioned how his rhyming style and how he picked up stuff when he was in nursery school, like when he was in school and learning and learning rhymes and just kind of how to pick up a cadence that way. I don't think many rappers would admit to learning some of their skill sets from nursery rhymes. Uh, no kidding, which is exactly where everybody starts their rhyming skills with a Z, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> That's a, Mother Goose taught us that. Uh, my grade three teacher decided to use me as an example when he was uh, teaching us uh, rhyming. And so this followed me for the rest of grade three. Uh -oh. Kelly belly bowl full of jelly. Oh, <laughs> well, well, well. I'm, I'm like, look, like this is years later and I'm still remembering the pain that I went through when he came up with that magic. Wow. He just wanted to prove that you had so many other words that rhymed with your name. Yeah. I guess. And then it literally like, and then that specific day out on the, you know, in the playground, people were just having at me, Kelly belly, bowl full of jelly. Like what's in that? imagine though, smelly never came up. So you had dodged it, something it there. Probably did. <laughs> well, it you know probably. what? We can make it happen now. Yeah. <laughs> Kelly, Kelly, <laughs> you're so smelly. Fantastic. <laughs> Do you know that it was international uh, tongue twister day? Today? 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 I did not know that. But by the time that we are recording this show, it was yesterday. Yeah. So by the time people are hearing this show, and thank you very much for uh, listening and checking into 90s now, by the way, um, it's a few days ago, but International Tongue Twisters, I got one for you. You ready? Do it All up. Right. Do it up. That if, um, if there was a synonym for cinnamon, it would be a cinnamon synonym. Wow. So you try to explain that to someone later, that if in fact <laughs> there were a synonym for cinnamon, that it would be 
a cinnamon synonym. I like that one. That's a good one. That's a lot though. That's a it's lot. It's taken a lot of practice. I will admit to that. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to internal practice for the rest of the show and see if I can whip it out at the end. Uh, well, I was on the radio uh, for International Tongue Twister Day, just happened to be, and I was able to play a clip of uh, Gloria from Modern Family, just to cover the now part of 90s now. Yeah. Um, when she did, uh, she was trying to learn how to speak more clearly so that her accent wouldn't rub off on Joe. And so the teacher, Joe's teacher, starts the, uh, Betty bought a bit of butter, that whole, <laughs> to, to practice your enunciation. And she says something to the effect of Betty bought a boot a bit. <laughs> Just completely ridiculous, but super funny. <laughs> Worth the watch so and available. Show. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I think is. I both found a few weeks ago, Scottish people trying to say the purple burglar alarm. Oh yeah. Purple burglar. <laughs> That's a tough one. That was epic. Purple burglar. Purple burglar. <laughs> but with a Scottish accent. They want to, mm. they want to punch you for having suggested yeah. they try it in the first place. First of all, I'm not sure in life there's a purple burglar alarm, but nonetheless. <laughs> Someone should make one. Yeah, just and sell it <laughs> only in, in Scotland. <laughs> Manufactured there. <laughs> <Yes>. Damn it. <laughs> uh, you guys ready for some trivia? Because I don't have any, but I'm sure that Kelly does. Let's do it. <laughs> 90s. <laughs> now, t -t 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 trivia. Bing bong. Bing bong. Back to the flashy Ready. cards. Back to the flashy cards. Ooh. See if they disappoint or not this week. And remember, we're not sure how accurate they are on account of the Janet Jackson tale <laughs> a few weeks back. <laughs> <laughs> on account of, we don't know who wrote these things. Yeah, not me. Um, so here we are. This is uh, in the science and technology genre Ooh. of things. Which I don't so think I've got a chance guys in advance. I just <laughs> do it. Uh, so IMDb began in 1990 as a list of actors with beautiful what? Sharon. Go Sharon. Databases. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if that makes sense. <laughs> Ooh, look at the database on her. You never heard that line? <laughs> I have not. <laughs> I've missed out clearly. <laughs> Adam, are you going to guess? Well, I'm going to guess with beautiful faces. Ooh, close, Adam. With beautiful eyes. Oh. Ooh. I but, didn't know that because I've used MD, IMDb several times as a career in radio announcing. And like, yeah, I had no clue that's where it started. Wow. But why would you do that? Why would why would you need a database of actors and actresses with beautiful eyes? They didn't give me that part of the question, Adam. Or That's they? in the next volume of cards. Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, I would like to, as we've discussed before on the show, uh, sometimes with the answer, there's some snazzy repartee that oh, comes, yes. along, <laughs> comes along with it. So the answer they actually wrote was eyes, comma, of course, exclamation mark. <laughs> oh. Of course. The internet so movie database started with eyeballs. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You're welcome. All well, right. Thank you. So question. I, I, I'm, wait, I'm curious to know, how did they change from just the eyes? And they went, oh, boobs too. Yeah. And everything else around <laughs> it. Maybe they got a sponsor, Adam. Oh, maybe. <laughs> we should get they, one of those. They went from the eyes to the, <laughs> hey, my eyes are up here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what happened uh so our next one is uh from movies Ooh, here we are so, um the 1998 movie the parent trap which stars Lindsay lohan as 11 year old twin sisters named the twin sisters oh sharon sharon who's whisper whisper talking hi you guys buffy and jody yeah <laughs> That's for the uh, older hey, end of the, the older end of the spectrum of our listeners. Only they will understand who Buffy and Jody are. <laughs> I'm gonna. I know go it's with not the them. right answer. Yeah, I'm gonna Adam. go with um, Allie and Sophie. Allie and Sophie. Uh, in, in, incorrect. Annie, oh, I'm gonna guess again then. Annie and Hallie. Kippy. <laughs> and and Sally. 
<laughs> no. no. Wait, not, what, what, not what was the answer? And Annie and Hallie. Well, we, we had the E part of it. Yeah, yeah. I, but uh, nothing else. I, Adam was four <laughs> when that movie came out. Uh, did you watch it, Adam? I've seen it a, a, a few years ago. Okay. I think I was dating someone whose favorite movie was The Parent Trap. So um, I got- shame you're not still together. Yeah. I know, right? (laughs) I was about to say the writing was on the wall on that one, Adam. Um, Uh, But yeah, I've seen it a a while back. Okay. Very nice. Don't really uh, remember the story, but- I I think Lindsay Lohan, by the way, resides a fair amount of the time, like over in Dubai or something. Like- As we speak, like in, like now? Yeah, She's so fair skinned. It's so hot there. This is what I hear, Sharon, but I hear that she's she been- making best, <laughs> but she's supposed to be doing a new movie project, I believe, at some point. So I'll keep you posted. Should I, that be confirmed? The Parent Trap, the sequel. Didn't they do the sequel? <laughs> Still <Yeah>. trapped. Yeah. <laughs> trapped in the heat in Dubai. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> at least she's doing a film project, not a project on films. So do you know? There's that. It's good news. She's working. Yeah. We are happy for her. Um, down the list of things that we would like to tackle subject-wise today. Uh, why would Will Smith be a great boss to have? He gives cash bonuses. Exactly. I love when bosses do that. Yeah. And he gives got- cash bonuses, I think, when it's not entirely his own fault. You know what I mean? No, I don't know what you mean. Well, I don't, I don't think, well, when you, I'll let you describe the story and then I'll tell you. No, why. no, go for it. Go for it. Well, when I read the story, if I understand it correctly, it's because the movie that uh, was going to, was a King, it was King Richard, right? That's uh, Serena and uh, Venus's dad about the tennis family Yep. Mm -hmm. and their dad. So uh, it sounds like, because I guess Will is a producer on the film, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't think that was actually completely written in the story, but there was an issue with the release where they I think are going straight to streaming as opposed to they're either going straight to streaming or they're releasing in theaters and streaming at the same time. So uh, I believe the cast wouldn't be getting as much money as they would have had it gone only to theaters first. Right. So Will decided to pony up money to pay the cast. And I don't know if some of the crew too, I'm assuming just the cast though, because I think that's where they would, would feel it um, to make up for the money they would have lost because of this new way that the distribution company was going. Well, then when you think of it, it's, uh, it's nice that he's doing it, but he's also sparing, uh, sparing him and whoever would be responsible um, in the executive production area of things in the office jobs. Uh, he's sparing a, a lawsuit because didn't Scarlett Johansson just yeah. take um, a film company to court and win? Yeah. Because if you release to uh, if you stream on the same as a release date and the actor is only signed in their contract to reap the benefits of a theatrical release and then you put it you stream it they're not get you know not as many people are going to leave the house if they don't have to yep right so well good for good for will and good for scarlett johansson for setting the bar but also good for will smith for uh for noticing <laughs> that he that might be the same yeah. situation. And I said distribution them. company, but I'm assuming it's the actual film company behind the film that that would have been causing this this uh, shenanigan trouble, if you will. Oh, shenanigan trouble. Yeah. Do you know, do we know <laughs> how much the bonus was? I don't think. Like, it are was we talking a few thousands or like a million or? Um. What was it that the uh, that he was paid forty million for the film, yeah, and then personally wrote million. checks out to his co-stars. Um, the, the, uh, girls had played his daughters in the film, um, that he gave out gifts after they, they changed the release. Um, but there's no dollar amount, but Hey man, cash bonuses, whatever the amount are always nice. It's like finding a $10 bill money, in your jacket he, pocket. He yeah. also gave money to Tony Goldwyn too, I believe, right. In the article, Sharon, um, yep. who yep. would have been on, uh, Scandal, right? That's the actor from Scandal, I think. Right. Yes. I love him. Hey. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that wasn't a hey to you guys. <laughs> Sorry for looking away. I've got a demanding four-legged beast again. A toddler. <laughs> uh, so good on Will Smith. Yeah. Uh, any extra cash bonus lying around, I'll take it. Thank you very much. Now, we talked about... Um, 
were we clear at the beginning talking about um uh, yes it was i did mention alanis and that all of all the heavy stuff that you know we've gone through with her as a as an artist and uh through her music and what she shared in her life and stuff like that uh, would you have ever pegged her to be a part or even the story surrounding a sitcom? Never. No kidding, but it com makes complete sense. It does. Like it, the moose base is uh, a mom of three with a rock star past, but it has been described as a 40 something woman married with three kids who spent her young adult life as an international rock star, famous for her self penned anthems of female rage and teen angst. Now, this voice of her generation, although deeply bonded with her family, can't quite get the next generation living in her house to listen to her. Oh, oh. <laughs> and then the hilarity ensues. I think it's going to be good. Actually, I'm, I'm be being fantastic. sarcastic a little bit. But producing. Yeah, she is. And uh, providing original music for the show, too. So I wonder, she's not going to be in it. She doesn't get to play herself. Yeah. Smart. I wonder who they will cast. Do you think they'll cast a newbie or they'll cast like a well-known Hollywood person? I think, uh, well, is it based on her life? Is it, is it going to be called the uh, Alanis's house? You know what I mean? <laughs> we don't know that. <laughs> Shay Alanis. Yeah. Uh, I would have to bet that they'd go with someone at least with experience, but maybe not super well-known so they don't cloud the image. Yeah, I, I can't even imagine who they'll get to play it. But I, I do think this makes all the sense, especially because Alanis clearly has a great sense of humor, even though so much of her music is like super uh, emotional. And I dare I say it, there's some darkness in there occasionally. Oh, yeah. And so it's so great to think that they're going to have a sitcom based around all of her magic. And P.S., just so we don't forget, Alanis, a massive fan of Janet Jackson. So I hope they write that into the script at some point. <laughs> then a guest spot by Janet just walking across the set. By the way, uh, it was, as we just, I, uh, I forgot to mention, because I only found out since last show, shout out the uh, Dancing with the Stars had a Janet Jackson night. Did we know this? Wow. I was I waiting not. to see how long it would take you to say it. <laughs> and uh, she actually made a little appearance, a little video uh, message to the peeps. Oh. And then, uh, yeah, then they went to town and had a great time doing all the, the Janet moves. Or the I Janet heard that uh, Jojo Siwa does a really good job of the dance. The, da the Rhythm Nation dance? I don't know. I didn't watch that part. I taped it. <laughs> <laughs> There's my little shoulder. Uh, 1814 for you, Kelly. I appreciate your efforts. Thank You're you. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Um, so from, uh, I was going to say, yes, uh, yeah, I was going to say big screen to small screen, but it's the other way around small screen to larger screen that Julia Louis Dreyfus is going to be, uh, in the movies, at least on a couple of occasions coming in our near future. I should air quote near future because, um, <laughs> the first film that we'll talk about, which is a comedy that centers, uh, around a New York novelist named Beth happily married to her husband, Don, hence the name Beth and Don, um she overhears him talking about how he hasn't liked her writing in years <laughs> and so that their once perfect marriage is then put to the test and the good in their lives is threatened sounds funny though and it'll start filming next uh next year so it's not even like nothing's happened yet so They'll film in 2022 and we'll see uh, what happens after that. But ahead of that one, she has done some work with Eddie Murphy and Jonah Hill. Mm -hmm. And no title on that one. Yeah. <laughs> so it's done. Um, and we'll have to keep our eye on Netflix for what's going to happen for Julia Louis-Dreyfus, who's just getting it done. Man, she's funny. She gets it done. She in that Eddie Murphy movie with Jonah Hill plays, I believe, Jonah Hill's mama. Nice. So that'll be, I can all, I, I, when I found out the news, I was envisioning the back and forth between these two. I think it'll be, I think it'll be fantastic. I can only imagine the two of them uh, on screen together. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. But like we have a long time to wait until we get it though. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, well, I, maybe that one will be tail end of 2022, but I think the Beth and Dawn one, I feel that's heading into 2023. Yeah. yeah. Why does it take so long? I used to think, you know, I'd be okay with it taking so long because it was actually on film, you know, like actual film and yeah. they had to do edits. 
sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but now it's, I, and no, no disrespect to anybody who does film editing, but I would think that it goes or should go a little bit quicker because it's, it's digital, but you it's coming so, but from a place of zero experience. Say that again. Standards are higher. Movie needs to be better, you know, so well, you got to work harder and longer, I guess. I guess. I guess you know who puts in the hard work? Janet Jackson. And you know who else puts in the hard work? Missy Elliott. Who? Missy Elliott. Yes, her too. Okay. Uh, I'll just, you know, in place of guessing every single person in the world before getting to the right answer. Uh, Lenny Kravitz. Yeah. He puts in the hard work on those abs. Oh my gosh. Beautiful. He's, he's pretty down with uh, wearing a buttoned shirt without doing the buttons yeah <laughs> you know and just showing up to whatever the event i'm here and often the event is leaving his beautiful home on the beautiful island of the eleuthera uh so you wouldn't necessarily necessarily need to uh to button up your shirt but uh thank you either way for posting pictures when you don't do that lenny kravitz i appreciate it isn't he um, 57 he should be yes not many 57 year olds i would venture to guess look like that no, and you know what? If you've got a commitment to yourself and me, <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate it. And by we, I mean me. Yeah. Thank you, Lenny Kravitz. Um, but fun that uh, I love his history, that uh, that he shares his history, and the idea that uh, never wanting to really be the front man, the lead, the singer of the band, wanting to, you know, just do what he did, and and so there's obviously no turning back for that uh, that stance on that uh, extremely talented performer, totally can play guitar, totally can work the crowd and seemingly not put too much into it, which is meaning it doesn't take him much. He puts a lot into it, mm -hmm. but it comes off as very Chill. effortless for him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I saw him last time he was here in Montreal, which was just a couple of years ago, pre COVID. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a woman a couple of rows down from us and over a little bit who had probably been overserved. Um, <laughs> and she was trying to film the show and people like were just on their feet the whole time. He's just so good. Yeah. And she was filming herself like selfie videos, but like, like you guys can see me. So it's like he, waving her hand around yeah. the camera. Like, I don't even know. She was so focused on the camera, which is, you know, that modern uh, stance of like, just put the cameras away and enjoy the show. But she was just like, yeah, and her arm was waving. I don't know what sort of film she would have got or if she watched it the next day, <laughs> even if she remembered where she was, because there would have been no indication from what she was filming that she was at the show. So put the cameras down, kids. Yes. Enjoy your life. Yeah. They probably use that as some sort of example in film, film school. Don't do this. <laughs> Don't do this. Nobody liked the Blair Witch Project when, the, the, you know, the shaky cameras makes everybody Especially sick. Especially when you're okay. filming yourself. <laughs> oh my gosh. No kidding. Ooh, look how much fun I had. And everybody's throwing up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so on we go. You ready for your 90s rewind? Ready. Let's do I'm it. I'm pretty sure. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> I know that we've done this year before, but I, I was struck by a few things that I wanted to hit uh, from around this time in 1998. It's going to be funny if we just did it last week and I totally am blanking on it. Ha 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 ha. Super funny. And you know, um, the Bee Gees were getting some due respect when Drew Hill covered How Deep Is Your Love with guest Redman hitting the Barry Gibb high notes. Nice. Just kidding, of course, because... Um, <laughs> It wasn't a Bee Gees cover. <laughs> Drew Hill did. And certainly Redman, not above, you know, hitting high notes if he could. But uh, How Deep Is Your Love from Drew Hill was a big part of the soundtrack to Rush Hour with Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker, which actually hit theaters in the fall of 1998. Um, other movie music that we were digging that fall from Armageddon. Mm. Oh, made, made balladeers of Aerosmith. They're gigantic. I don't want to miss a thing. Oh, but you're going to when you die out there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Did you just wreck the ending on me? Yeah, from uh, 23 years ago, I wrecked the ending. <laughs> it's sort of on you if you haven't seen the movie yet. <laughs> haven't seen it. You never saw Armageddon. 
Mean Everybody it. dies. It's crazy. Everybody? <laughs> I'm just no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Some people die, but they deserved it. No, they didn't. See, <laughs> I, I'm not telling any truth at all. You should just watch Armageddon. It's actually a pretty good movie. It's super like blockbustery and yeah, grand. And of course, you'd have a big ballad from a big rock band. Yeah. It's really good at the same time. And cool also that Aerosmith would be the band to provide that ballad and Liv Tyler would be the uh, female lead in the movie. Liv Tyler, of course, Steven Tyler's daughter. Uh, one thing I thought was- connection there. What's that? Wonder if there's <laughs> any connection there. Of uh, Liv Tyler being oh. Steven Tyler's daughter? In the same project. Oh, yes. Nepotism, got it. Nepotism kills, Kelly. Okay. <laughs> and everybody dies because of nepotism in the movie. Okay. Great. Um, <laughs> one thing I loved about uh, this week or around this week in 1998 was that the hotshot debut chart single from an album called the miseducation of Lauren Hill mm -hmm. of Lauren. I don't show up on time. Hill uh, <laughs> was the song doo -wop. that thing that was about to blow us all away. It debuted at number one. Wow that thing bananas Gosh, she had it man what an album that was anywho that's your 90s rewind <laughs> thank you Adam, i'd like to point out that I, I still feel we didn't work on that sound effect i know i noticed but i told you it's been a crazy week okay. it's been a crazy day and i'm <laughs> not so proud of you I'm not proud of it. <laughs> okay. I kind of like it. It's sort of, whoa. All right. Want to hear it again? Yes. Whoa. <laughs> whoa. You know what that says? That truly, that sound says to me, get me a big pen. I have to fix that cassette. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, before oh. you wrap up, Sharon, a quick note to our peeps. If you're listening to this, which hopefully you are on all the major podcast platforms, if you'd like to have a little view of us on the visual podcast, you can hit up our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Kelly Alexander show. And the first playlist you'll see is nineties. Now we've got like at least five or if not six episodes on the visual podcast. So if you want to see our beautiful made for radio faces, uh, you can definitely do that. And also don't forget to find us on all of our social media. Cause there's lots going on on the TikTok and the Instagram and the Facebook at nineties. Now FM. Julio. Thanks you guys. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you too. It's nice to be seen. Thanks. Uh, and thank you everybody for listening and finding us wherever it is that you do. We appreciate that. Always have always will, uh, season 10 show 10 in the books. Thank you for listening to nineties. Now still happening.